good, y'all? It's the Duma Shets. React and we're back, back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. So excited about this video. If you're new to us. And we're new to you. Make sure you scroll down. Hit, hit that subscribe button. button. And turn on the post notification bell. Because we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. are dangerous places to pre-industrial populations. Um, there's wild animals in there, and um, they're dark and mysterious. So it's not surprising that um, for any peoples who lived close to forests, you would develop a body of folklore that had to do with the dangers of the forest. The chief figure in the folklore, as far as I know it, and he was always there, and he has always been there, is Papa Bois. Papa Bois is reputed to be the guardian of the forest. I guess Papa this Bois. is a retention to tales way before, we can remember, way before the century of guardians of the forest and so on. And Papa Bois was supposed to be, he was a shape shifter as many of them were. So he could appear as anything, but usually he appeared as a large, horned, hairy creature. And he was not against hunting, but he was against indiscriminate hunting. Oh, Maybe whoa. that was a sort of an environmental control in those times because people were killing all the animals and so on. Okay, hold on. I ain't heard nothing about no folklore before that was positive. Mm. This not even like... A, okay, so he probably did come off as scary, creepy, mm -hmm. and, you know, large entity, but his duty was to protect the forest. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, protect okay. it from the people who want to chop down the trees. And eat the deers. Mm -hmm. of what shape he assumes, but... Judging from an Alf Gadayo painting, Papa Gua has horns and he has a cloven hoof. I'm reminded of the figure of a pan who in Greek Roman mythology had a similar stature as a nature deity. He played a pipe made out of reeds and he was half man and half goat. Historically, these creatures exist as myths in other cultures around the world. But to this day, the forests of Trinidad continue to hold secrets that stir more than just the imagination. It has been put forward that Papa Bois is not a mythological character. That there was a point in time, several hundred years ago, in the early days of Trinidad, that Trinidad actually possessed a Bigfoot. This, this is a point of view that I have heard, that foresters Hunters, people who live in the high woods, have experienced a long time ago the presence of or actually saw the old man of the forest. These hunters would tell you um, first hand experiences of encounters with these strange creatures. And um, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't lie. They wouldn't lie. They, they, they're telling you they've seen it, they've experienced it. Um, it's no figment of the imagination. They were not drunk or tired or hallucinating because the dogs were there and there were other people with them, they were witnesses. And uh, these, these creatures uh, do exist. Throughout. But you know it's crazy when you hear from the parent mm -hmm. instead of a stranger. And you, know, you hear from somebody out there, you be like, okay, you know, la da da, I hear you, but whatever. But then when you hear from your parent, when they say something that happened to them or it's something they noticed since they was a child, mm -hmm. and then they tell you when you become of age and you're like, yo, that's interesting. It gotta be real. And you gonna believe your parents. A hundred percent. Listen, there's some things that has happened around me that has been unexplainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. but listen. Mm -hmm. There's just some entities out there that you... It's yeah. life. <laughs> For decades, hunters have claimed to have encounters with a man-like creature of the forest. At the risk of being ridiculed by their pairs, they remain true to the stories and are convinced that what they saw was real. Denton Lorenko, a jeweler by trade, relates his own experience of what he saw as a teenager. I was about 15 years old, now attending St. Mary's College. And what I used to do as a pastime, I would make crab traps, and there will grow back crabs in abundance. I had approximately 20 traps, and I was down to probably the last five. I felt a presence as if I was being watched. I could also smell the creature. I thought it was 
the people living on the beach, they had goats. But there were no goats around. I couldn't hear the goats, I couldn't see the goats. So I stood up and I started to look around me to see what it is that is there, this presence. I was very close to an immortal tree and there were lots of lian vines coming off of the tree. When I look closely at the vines, there I notice this creature standing up straight, looking at me through the vines. At first I thought, well, it could be the vines, how it's shaped or whatever. That's, I'm getting an illusion, right? So I walked up slowly and I'm like probably four feet away from it because it's just behind the vines. It was also covered in coarse hair, very, very coarse hair. I was in total shock seeing this thing, being so close to it, and I could actually smell it more so than ever now. I never saw anything like it, even though it was covered completely in hair, totally from head to toe. The eyes. Hair and he lived to tell a story, child. Listen. Yeah. I would have been floating right there. Oh, you'd have just been kicking leaves up because you've been running. <laughs> Kipping hot water. And look, what? ASAP. Uh, Looking interesting. At me, I done watched enough scary stories. I wonder what color the eyes was. If you can add that oh. in there, that would be real interesting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay, we can all say we seen something furry. Yeah. But what color was the eyes? And you're just looking at them. Oof. Okay. The most prominent feature that you could see on its face, those two eyes, and they were big and round. But why I was so scared is the fact that even though it was three and a half feet tall, it was stronger than you and me put together. They could, they could rip you apart if it wanted to. I took the fastest way out of the swamp. I dropped my cutlass, and I left my crab traps, and my bag, and everything, and I ran straight home. Why are you eating up all the crab, man? Take I the would crab meet back. other people from the village that would set crab traps as well. And we would work different parts of the swamp. And I met a guy once and I told him my experience. And he told me, um, he said, you know, Denton, you saw a papa boy, you know? They tell me things like that. They saw papa boy with animals and so on. Couldn't be true. I don't know if they made, if they wanted to make up a story or if they believed that what they saw. But, um, but, but one hears these things and hears it as something real. I know it couldn't be real. It just I can't think be. I believe you know. <laughs> the laugh. Listen. But he know more than he thinks. Whether it's real or not, one thing I don't do, I don't play in forests. Mm. Mm -mm, I need a clear path to wherever I'm going. Man, there's enough when it's <laughs> dark in the room. You know, that when you're young and it's dark in the room and you uh -huh. think you see something out the corner, y'all, uh -huh. and then you look, the shadow going, it's like, nah, 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 I, I know what I saw. For real, listen, I used to live in an old house, right? Oh, that sounds creepy already. <laughs> and I just, I, I lived in a, I, my room was in the back of the house. Okay. Where they had a dark hallway to get to the other rooms, and there was like no door. Like it was a, it was a doorway, but it didn't have a door on it. Mm -hmm. So it was like it was. I guess my room was like the playroom mm -hmm. that we would call it today, right? Listen, I, I just knew I always felt something. Yeah, yeah. Because my grandparents so passed me... in the house. So. Okay. Yeah, those stores <laughs> always have like you know. <laughs> Creaky doors opening and closing. But let me ask you this. Which would be more disturbing to experience? A creepy house that has like webs and everything. It look run down and stuff and it's nice and dark and quiet. Or a real nice lavish house that is pitch black. It's been abandoned for centuries. Abandoned for centuries? I, I ain't, mm -mm. Yeah. Because just because it look good don't mean it's good. Mm -mm. You go up in there and some things can turn up. Turn up. Okay. <laughs> these creatures and I, I believe that what happens is that these creatures you know there's an intermarriage of mythologies so that okay. aspects of European mythology God and devil get mixed up with African myths and maybe other kinds of mythologies Amerindian myths might be in operation as well so we create these figures as part of our maybe adjustment to our own society as our ancestors kind of accommodated themselves to the new conditions. They didn't lose their, their myths, but they merged them with other people's mythologies. Remember that all the people who came here after the end of slavery did not find 
an empty place. They found a culture that was already lively, developing. It was basically an African-European, African-French culture. So all the people coming in um, had to, to some extent, adapt to that culture. Of course, we know they struggled hard to retain their ancestral cultures, but they were coming into a society where a European-African cultural fusion, what we have come to call Creole culture and a Creole society, was already in place. And so for the Chinese, the Indians, to a lesser extent the Portuguese, Syrian, Lebanese coming in, they had to deal with an already existing mixed fused culture. All right, boom, we're going to stop right there, man. And yeah, I, from basically, basically what I'm hearing is that stories grow over time. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't think the title, it changes ex exactly, but the storyline does. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you could call something out and say this is what it was, but you, people got so many different uh, uh, perspectives of how it went down in mm -hmm. their life, you know? So. Yeah, I would never say that what someone feel that they saw is not the truth. Mm, you know, mm. of course, I have my own beliefs about things, but I'm not going to just say, oh, you didn't see that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. nah, I feel nah, like, nah. yeah. All right, y'all. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.